Hi everybody, I'm Katherine from KatherineSewing.com and in today's video I'm going to be showing how I created this 1840s inspired chemise. The chemise was the undergarment worn directly next to the skin under the corset and it also doubled as a nightgown. My chemise was made using lightweight linen and a self-drafted pattern and as you'll see it was a very convoluted and rather improvised process. Not because this is a difficult project, but simply due to mostly drafting errors on my part. Probably a bit of sloppiness, but honestly I don't even remember because I drafted this pattern a few months ago. And so that just led to a few things that need to be corrected on the way. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Okay, so here are all my pattern pieces laid out on the table. The, the body pieces and the neckline yoke, the sleeve and the gusset. Here are the neckline yoke pieces for the back, pinned together at the center back. And here is attempt number one at the sleeves. I'm just pinning on the gusset which is a square of fabric that's folded in half, so it's like a triangle at the bottom of the sleeve, and it gives greater mobility and range of movement and comfort. And there they are, but I realize these sleeves were way too small, so I have no idea what I was thinking during the drafting process, but I tried to salvage it by slashing it open and adding another piece of fabric into the sleeves, but once those were sewn into the French seams, they still ended up being too small. So, here's attempt number two at the sleeves. So I just kind of improvised and cut out a bigger sleeve and a larger gusset, and I'm just trimming down the gusset a bit to make sure it's the right size. Okay, and... Here I am, again, round two, pinning the gusset onto the underside of the sleeves. And this, these sleeves ended up being the right size, thankfully. I opted to sew this chemise using French seams as opposed to flat felled seams because I find them easier and quicker. So with French seams, I'm just trimming down that seam allowance before I sew the second pass, which will enclose those raw edges. And now I'm sewing the two layers of the neckline yoke pieces together. And I'm just going to be pinning this piece of cotton lace inside of that seam so that once it's turned right side out, there will just be a small little narrow portion of lace peeking out. And I'm just turning that right side out, and now it's been pressed, and I'm quite happy with how that turned out. And here are the finished sleeves with the French seams. I'm also quite happy with these after all those attempts. <laughs> now this was a tricky part because I was working from a soft drafted pattern. I had to kind of improvise and figure out how much of the sleeve should be sewn to the body of the chemise, and how much should be left above to form the neckline. And again, this is my first attempt at this because I, I way um, underestimated how much of the sleeve should be attached to the body of the chemise, meaning that there was much too high of a portion of the sleeve left above as part of the neckline. And the reason why that wouldn't work is because my neckline yoke would not have had enough circumference to go around all that amount of sleeve as well as the width of the chemise. So yeah, I had to rip out those seams and do that again. <laughs> okay, so here was attempt number two. This one turned out to be successful. I pinned and sewed much more of the sleeve down to the body. 
Now I'm just adding some hand gathering stitches to the top of the chemise and I use two rows of these and I really like how hand stitches look. I think the gathers they create are much more attractive. And I also did this to the top of the sleeves as well. So there we go, I'm just kind of guesstimating how much I should pull up on those gathering threads so that it will fit to the neckline yoke. And so I'm pinning on that neckline yoke and the way I attached this was by doing two passes of hand stitches so that it would be totally invisible. The first pass of stitches did actually catch some of the underside, but it wasn't totally, you know, stable. So I went in for another pass on the inside of the chemise. And you can see at the center front, now that it's done, I just added that little slash. That is where the um, button front is going to be. Okay, so now it's time for the final hems on the sleeves and the skirt. And I just did a rolled hem in which I attach the cotton lace onto the hem and using a single pass of hand stitches. And miraculously, I ended up, my lace ended up, you know, ending right at the exact length that I needed it to be. So I was pretty happy about that. I'm just attaching those final edges of lace together. Okay, and there is the finished skirt hem. Now I will be finishing up the center front. There's going to be a slash down of it and this just helps getting the chemise on really and so this was another improvised process i had to figure out how to finish the edges of that slash so i pinned on a patch of fabric this is on the right side of the chemise and i'm going to sew around the borders of that slash using hand stitches because it gave me that much more control We'll see what I do next to finish that off. I think I used a running back stitch for this. And when I get to the point of the slash, I did sew a little bar tack. Because when you have a slash and a piece of fabric, you really need to stabilize that point of the slash so that it doesn't continue any further into the garment. Okay, so that's finished being sewn. I'm just cutting down the middle of that patch now and trimming up the edges before I turn it into the wrong, the inside of the chemise. And now it's been pressed. And so now I had to figure out how I wanted to finish the edges of this patch, which are on the inside of the chemise, because we don't want them fraying all over the place. So I opted to use a narrow strip of white satin ribbon because it was easy, it looks pretty, and it added an extra layer of stability to this slash. So I just um, did some stab stitches around the edge to hold that in place. Okay everybody, so my chemise is finished. Um, off camera, I did sew on the two buttons and the two handworked buttonholes. And yeah, it was, it was still like, despite all the improvisation that had to take place, it was still a really quick project. And I'm really, really happy with how it turned out because 
for me this is one of the like prettiest most lacy things i've sewn before and i know it pales in comparison to many of the other things i've seen sewists create but i'm really happy with it because usually i'm kind of a no-nonsense kind of sewer i don't like adding all these unnecessary steps but i'm really happy i did with this one i'm super happy with how it turned out and if you make anything like this um, let me know how it goes leave your comments and questions below and also check out the accompanying blog post which will be linked in the description box and if you enjoy history bounding content sewing content so like sewing clothes that are historically inspired but work in the modern day then definitely subscribe to my channel and subscribe to my email list on my blog you'll really enjoy the stuff that i'm coming out with see you all later guys bye